Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to Cello Tuesdays. I am Diane Chaplin. I'm going to be playing live stream concerts the first Tuesday of every month for the foreseeable future. Portland Cello Project is planning to tour in March and April. I will continue to play live streams on the first Tuesday of each month. Today's concert is called A New Year on Every Continent. And uh, putting to th this together, I tried to choose pieces. Uh, most of them are very short because it's a lot of works. Um, but pieces that represented in some way the folk culture uh, of the country from which they come. So I'm going to start in Australia with a composer named Peter Sculthorpe. He passed away in 2014. In 1979, he wrote a requiem for solo cello. So a requiem is like a requiem mass for the dead. And I would like to offer this up as the requiem mass for the year 2021, uh, which although there may have been some beautiful moments, I think we are all glad to be done with. So this is my, my offering of a requiem mass for that year. Um, in 2004, Sculthorpe wrote a requiem for full chorus and orchestra. And in that piece, he included a didgeridoo, which is an indigenous instrument from Australia. And so this is a little bit where I'm getting my uh, folk culture reference. It's a little vague, but in the requiem that isn't the one I'm going to play, there was a didgeridoo. Uh, I'm going to play the first movement, which is an introduction movement to this Requiem, and I just will read a few words from the composer. The plain song Requiem Mass seemed to be especially appropriate in writing for the particular timbral and expressive qualities of the cello. It seems to me the way the world is going, we need all the requiems we can get. Those of you who are very astute will have noticed that my C string was tuned down to B flat for that, which I think just, I, I really like pieces with cellos that are kind of tuned funny. Scordatura is that word, for those of you who were checking your vocabulary from last concert. Uh, it does wreak a little bit of havoc on the instrument. to 1904, the British National Antarctic Expedition occurred, uh, which did scientific experiments on the largely uncharted continent of uh, Antarctica. Uh, the ship that made this voyage was called the Discovery, and because of the cold <laughs> that is in Antarctica, at times the Discovery would be completely frozen into the ice for like more than a year. 
So they had another ship called the Morning, which came and brought them supplies. And on the Morning, there happened to be someone named Captain Gerald S. Dorley, who wrote a bunch of songs about different things that happened to them on their voyage. This book was published about 40 years after the voyage. It was published in 1943 by the Bread and Cheese Club of Melbourne. Um, the ship had a piano on it, and when they went to bring the ship on board, they discovered it was too wide to fit through the door, and so they sawed it in half right through the keyboard, and they reassembled it below deck, and it evidently worked perfectly fine uh, for them to be able to have evening entertainments and to sing these songs. Uh, the, this song I'm going to play is called The Ice King. It's very much, I think this set of songs is very much Victorian parlor songs, uh, and The Ice King kind of talks a little bit about what was going on there, so I will read you some of the lyrics. Down in the deadly stillness, cut off from the world alone, held in the grasp of the Ice King on the steps of his crystal throne, wearily watching the hours go by till the morning comes with the spring, far away in that cold white land in the home of the great Ice King. This is The Ice King by Gerald Dorley. From Antarctica, we're going to go up to Africa, in particular to Nigeria, uh, where I'm going to play uh, something by Godwin Sado, who is one of my Facebook friends. I know he's going to be watching this. Uh, he was the first Nigerian ever to earn a doctoral degree in music performance. Uh, he did study in the U.S. He plays the organ. 
And in September 2021, not very long ago, he wrote a suite of Nigerian songs for cello. He, he offers it in a couple different versions, cello solo or cello duet. And what I've done is I've kind of taken the harmonies from the cello duet and I've combined them a little bit with the cello solo part. So hopefully Professor Sado will approve of what I've done with it. Um, these, uh, this suite is a collection of Nigerian folk songs and indigenous hymn tunes. Uh, and I am going to play one called Honor Your Mother. It is a pentatonic folk song. It's based on a folk tale, uh, which includes these words. The child that looks disrespectfully at her mother will indeed lead a miserable life. This is Honor Your Mother by Godwin Sado. <laughs> From Nigeria, we're going to travel eastwards and northwards to Turkey. I'm actually going to play two different things from Asia because it is the continent that has the largest variety of different countries. And I think also the, the most difference from what we consider Western classical music. I think there's an exoticism in many of the, the cultures in Asia that is sounds very different to our Western acclimated ears. Uh, so I'm going to play a piece by the composer Ahmed Adnan Saigun, who died in 1991. He was a, one of a group of composers known as the Turkish Five, who pioneered Western classical music in Turkey. While he was a young man, Bela Bartok, the famous Hungarian composer, visited Turkey. And Bartok um, spent a lot of his life doing ethnomusicological research, collecting folk music from indigenous people in Eastern Europe, in Northern Africa, in bit parts of Asia, because he really felt that encroaching civilization was going to wipe out this music and, and cultures from the earth, which to a certain extent it has. Um, and so we have this great wealth of material that on wax cylinders and some that was transcribed from a lot of cultures that would other the music would otherwise be lost. And Saigun went along with Bartok when Bartok came to Turkey to study the folk music of that area. So Saigun learned all about the folk music of his own country. And then he really masterfully takes those sounds of the folk music and weaves them with his Western classical training to create a very, very beautiful music. Uh, I'm going to play something from his partita, which was written in 1954. It's in five movements. I'm gonna play the fourth movement. Um, and I think you'll hear what I'm talking about, about the exotic sound. It's, this is based on a Turkish mode and it has a very different sound, I think, than, than again, the Western classical music that we're used to. So this is the fourth movement from the partita by, by Adnan Saigun.
We're gonna travel almost directly due east to China. I'm gonna play a piece by the composer Chen Yi. She was the first Chinese woman to ever earn a master's degree in music composition from Beijing University. Beijing Conservatory, excuse me, I believe Beijing Conservatory. Um, and she also studied in the US, she went to Columbia University, and now she teaches at the Kansas City Conservatory. Um, she also is a visiting professor at the university in Tianjin. And Tianjin is famous for some folk dances, including the one that I'm gonna to play today. So she wrote, a, she wrote a suite called Jinggu Suite, which has four movements that describe various um, beautiful things about the folk culture in Tianjin. I'm gonna play something called Dance with Flying Symbols. And like many things that end up being folk dances, this started out as a sort of military idea. About a thousand years ago, flying symbols were used as weapons and you can just imagine that just, I don't know if they were like frisbees, I'm not sure. I can imagine they would do a lot of damage though. Um, and then in, about a hundred years ago, the idea of this weaponry of flying symbols was incorporated into this folk dance that is done still today in Tianjin. So this is Dance with Flying Symbols by Chen Yi. Thank you. 
travel across the Pacific Ocean now to North America, specifically to the United States. I'm going to play a piece by Mark O'Connor, who is really renowned as an American fiddle player. This is his Appalachia Waltz, which he wrote originally for solo violin. He's also um, arranged it for other instruments. This is from 1993. Appalachia Waltz by Mark O'Connor. So now we're heading south to South America, specifically to Chile, which is really close to Antarctica, so we've almost come full circle. Um, I'm going to play something called Preludio y Cueca by Jose Luis Sanchez. The Cueca is the national dance of Chile. It's considered to have both Spanish and indigenous influences. And it is a dance that reenacts the courting ritual of a hen and a rooster. So the dancers hold a white handkerchief and they kind of make pecking motions. Um, they do this sort of figure eight dance that they come together and go apart. And the way that they know when to 
turn and come together again is that the musicians yell out vuelta, which means round or, or lap. And you will hear me <laughs> yelling that. Um, uh, I feel like the beginning is sort of, sounds like the people milling around waiting for the dance to start. So this is Preludio y Cueca by Jose Luis Sanchez. many many countries and it's the place from which we get the bulk of the western classical music that we play so it it wasn't that hard for me to choose something though because what i did was i chose a piece i really wanted to play that had a folk element in it i'm going to play the sonata by georgi ligeti he died in 2006 and he was renowned for being a super super abstract avant-garde composer that was his really claim to fame this is not one of those pieces, however, and he was sort of dismayed that this piece for which he is quite famous was from the early time in his life before he became an abstract composer. Um, he was a Hungarian Jew. His parents were sent to Auschwitz and he himself and other members of his family were, were sent to labor camps. Only he and his mother came out alive after the war. And then he went to study with Zoltan Kodai. Zoltan Kodai was the countryman of Vela Bartok, and they together went and did all their explorations of ethnomusicological research and collecting folk music. So that when Ligeti went to study with Kodai, Kodai had all this Hungarian folk music that he had been collecting for years and years. And so Ligeti learned the idiom of Hungarian folk music from Kodai. 
Um, because he really wanted to write avant-garde music and that was suppressed in communist Hungary in 1956, he got out of Hungary and went and lived the rest of his life in Vienna. He wrote the sonata in two different chunks. The first movement was written in 1948. It's called Dialogue. And it's just, it's very beautiful, very expressive, very loving. You can hear a low voice and a high voice sort of exchanging uh, love letters almost with each other. He wrote this piece for a female cellist with whom he was smitten and she completely spurned both him and the piece. She never played the piece, completely rejected the whole idea. So that five years later in 1953 when another female cellist asked him to write a piece for her, he said, you know, I'm gonna take that movement that that other cellist couldn't even bother to look at and I'm gonna turn it into the first movement of the sonata and then he wrote uh, a second movement, which is very much like a, maybe a Hungarian fiddle music, like a dance. So I sort of see this as a, as a Hungarian love song followed by a Hungarian dance. And the second movement is called Capriccio. So this is Dialogue and Capriccio. It is the Sonata for Solo Cello by Georgi Ligeti.
Thank you very much for tuning in and listening. Uh, my heart is beating very fast right now, as it tends to when I end a concert that way. Um, I'm going to be back on February 1st with music for Black History Month, featuring lots and lots of black female composers. Thank you so much. This has been Cello Tuesdays. I'll see you next month. <laughs>